Hi all, welcome to Seek Precise, Prelims Current Issues in Short and Ease. Let's discuss the most important prelims articles from today's newspaper. So the articles are Anthrax, Verbal Gear Strategy and Methyl Isocyanate, World Craft City and Kashmir's Craft, Landfall of a Cyclone, and Girnar Wildlife Sanctuary. Let's see the first article about Anthrax. So recently, a female elephant has died due to Anthrax at the Bandipu Tiger Reserve. A detailed article about Bandipu Tiger Reserves is attached here. Go and check out this article. In this article, we'll look uh, more facts about anthrax. So anthrax is also known as malignant pustule or wool sorter disease. So this is a infectious disease caused by a kind of bacteria, a gram positive, a rod shaped bacteria called Bacillus anthracis. So understand that this is a uh, disease caused by bacteria. Anthrax is a bacterial disease. So this is a naturally occurring bacteria. This is a naturally occurring bacteria which infects both domestic as well as wild animals. Okay. So in 2001, anthrax was in news because it was widely used as a biological weapon in United States. So the threat of, uh, threat of anthrax being a biological weapon was uh, real in 2001. But right now, so we'll talk about biological weapon and a convention related to biological weapon in detail. But let's look into more facts about anthrax. So this is actually a zoonotic disease. So understand that by, by mentioning zoonotic, by meaning zoonotic disease, you should know that it's a disease which is spread from an animal, a vertebrate animal to human. So understand that those mosquitoes and those diseases which are spread through mosquitoes are not considered as zoonotic disease. So dengue is not a zoonotic disease uh, because it's not a, the mosquitoes are not uh, vertebrate so only those diseases spread uh, from a vertebrate animal to human is considered as a zoonotic disease so anthrax is a zoonotic disease okay so it infects uh, human through direct contact with animals or other contaminated product or uh, direct contact with bacteria also understand that it's not that contagious generally not contagious among humans so person to person transmission is very rare in case of anthrax uh, disease so this is also one of the most important uh, fact you should know regarding anthrax person to person transmission is rare okay so in india also this uh, is common uh, among the southern states of india including andhra pradesh tamil nadu karnataka and Orissa, and less frequent in the northern parts of india northern states of india and uh, even though it's less frequent, uh, states like Jammu and Kashmir, Assam and Karnataka uh, have reported uh, anthrax cases in the past. So treatment uh, include antibiotic therapy as well as vaccination of livestock and human vaccines are also available in case of anthrax. Okay. So you should know that this was used as a biological weapon way back in 2001 in United States. So more facts about biological weapons also should be known with regard to this article. So Biological weapons can be either bacteria, virus or other toxins which are naturally available which are used intentionally to cause death or disease in humans, animals or plants. So it's not only uh, in, hum in case of humans but uh, whether it is intentionally used to cause disease or death uh, in animals or plants are also considered as biological weapons. So um, they are uh, different agents are being used here so bio weapons are classified as or are prohibited uh, to be used in any case okay so there is a convention which controls or which prohibits the use development production acquisition transfer or stockpiling of biological weapon and that convention is known as biological and toxin weapons convention so this was enforced in 1975 uh, and uh, 75 in Geneva, or Switzerland. So the aim is to prohibit the development, production, acquisition, transfer, stockpiling and use of biological weapons. So India is a signatory of this convention. 180, almost 183 members are signatories of this convention. So this is the first of a treaty to ban an entire category, category of weapon of mass destruction. So this has actually eliminated or banned an entire category of weapons of mass destruction which is biological and toxin weapon okay so that's all about anthrax and bioweapons and biological uh, convention so 
we will discuss one of the uh, question which was asked in 2016 related to international thermonuclear experiment reactor so india is an important member of international thermonuclear experimental reactor in the, if this experiment succeeds what is the immediate advantage for india so advantage is that it can build fusion reactors for power generation so a science question is given here from 2016 so that's all about this article next art article is about bobal gas tragedy and methyl isocyanate so we are on the 40th year of bobal gas tragedy so this gas tragedy has occurred on 3rd december of 1984 so as we all know as you may be knowing that the toxic chemical which caused for the tragedy is methyl isocyanate so this gas was leaked from pesticide plant owned by union carbide uh, india limited so union carbide india limited is the company name and this gas methyl isocyanate was a intermediary uh, react uh, reagent in one of the pesticide that the plant was making okay so this is the first major uh, first major chemical uh, industrial disaster in india and this is considered as the uh, as the deadliest chemical uh, industrial disaster in the in the world okay so after this bobal gas tragedy so one of the main outcome of this uh, bobal gas tragedy is that public liability insurance act was enacted in 1991 so due to bobal gas tragedy almost 16000 people have lost their life and many have been affected uh, injured seriously and because of that a public liability insurance act was enacted in 1991 and based on that act union carbide india limited later has provided compensation amount as well okay so the various initiatives taken to tackle chemical accidents are important for you so this can be important for your mains as well so go and check out this uh, article in detail go and check out the facts and initiatives taken for uh, tackling chemical accidents in india in detail and right we will check out more facts about methyl isocyanate so methyl isocyanate is essentially a flammable colorless liquid so these properties of methyl isocyanate can be asked for your prelims so also know that re, uh, this methyl isocyanate uh, chemical can violate uh, violently react with water and is highly toxic when inhaled and that is a major reason uh, why almost 16000 people have lost their life okay so regarding this uh, chemical tragedy bobal uh, gas tragedy you should know uh, you should know more about indian chemical council as well as chemical weapons convention so we have already discussed this article in detail on november 29th so go and check out this article as well we have already discussed this article in detail about indian chemical council as well as chemical weapons convention and uh, there is an article about organization for prohibition of chemical weapons also given here so in 2016 a three statement question about organization for prohibition of chemical weapons was asked by upsc go and check out this article in detail okay so let's discuss the next article about world craft city and kashmir's craft so recently artisans from kashmir and central asia were reunited almost after 500 years in srinagar in a three day craft exchange initiative so many artisans from central asian countries like uzbekistan kazakhstan afghan uh, all afghanistan all were uh, all were reunited in the Srinagar uh, three day craft exchange initiative. So, World Craft City initiative should be uh, known because it was launched by 2014 by World Craft Council, a non profit organization. So, this was launched under the World Craft Council, World Craft City program. So, the purpose is to recognize cities for their contribution to cultural, economic, and social development through craft. So, the, to recognize cities for their contribution to cultural, economic, and social development through crafts are recognized. Okay, so the Indian cities uh, which are recognized as world craft cities by WCC should be noted. The four cities right now: Srinagar, Jaipur in Rajasthan, Mamallapuram in Tamil Nadu, and Mysore in Karnataka. So these are the four cities, Indian cities recognized as world craft cities by WCC. So this can be asked for your prelims okay so the key crafts in srinagar also should be noted because in 2016 there was an art there was a 2015 there was a uh, question regarding kalamgari painting so kalamgari painting refers to so this kalamgari painting is a hand painted cotton textile in south india so if you know that it's a hand painted cotton textile in south india you uh, you could have scored two marks then 
so know uh, the various crafts in Srinagar because uh, similar question can be asked okay so Pashmina shawl is a shawl made of wool of Chandangi got or Chandangi got found in Ladakh so Pashmina shawl uh, is important so this is made of a wool of Chantangi got found in Ladakh then there is Kashmiri carpets uh, walnut wood carving walnut wood carving can be asked because uh, craft of fine wood carving using walnut wood from Juglan Ragya tree so this is done in Kashmir Srinagar okay paper mache namda rungs chain stitch rungs Kashmiri embroidery or adi and sosni copperware and kani shawls and kantamband all are discussed while talking about crafts of Srinagar so at least understand that these crafts are from Srinagar because that can be used for uh, that can be used for eliminating certain options okay so that's all about this article let's discuss the next article about landfall of a cyclone so recently imd has reported that cyclone fengal made landfall over puducherry so let's discuss various facts about cyclone in general so uh, cyclone uh, by learning about cyclone should know that cyclone has got an i so i is the area where subsiding of warm air is happening and this is almost a very calm region of a cyclone and around the eye region is the is known as the eye wall so this in this area what happens is that the air actually moves upwards so from this area onwards the cyclone gets uh, cyclone gets more turbulent okay so in the eye region it's almost uh, very calm and around the eye region is not so calm uh, region called eye wall is situated so let's discuss what is uh, known by a landfall landfall of a cyclone is the event of a tropical cyclone coming onto the land after being over water so when we talk about landfall so it's generally the eye that we are talking here so if the eye reaches the land then we call that uh, all that as the landfall of the cyclone so it's different from direct hit of a cyclone so direct hit of a cyclone can be caused by the eye wall coming to a region so it's not it need not be the eye as such okay it can be the eye wall and that is when uh, the wind speed can be very high and when the eye uh, later reaches the land what happens is that the wind can wind speed can uh, subsequently be reduced and again there will be the a eye wall region uh, up to the uh, up next coming uh, coming okay so that is why mostly what the government agencies will be saying is that so uh, suppose the eye has reached the land and then the area will be generally calm okay then cyclone effect won't be uh, that much there so then also the government agency will be saying that okay even though it's calm now uh, a eye wall uh, will be approaching again and that is why you should not uh, move out and the cyclones will be cyclone will be getting worse okay so understand that strongest wind can be experienced over land without the landfall because the strongest wind in a tropical cyclone are not located precisely at the center but uh, around the center in the region called eye wall okay so that's about uh, the basic facts about cyclone so understand that cyclone fengal has made landfall over puducherry so regarding uh, deta uh, detail about naming of cyclone a separate article uh, is given here so go and check out that article as well so let's discuss one of the question asked in 2015 film in the south atlantic at southeastern pacific region in tropical latitude cyclones do not originate what is the reason so the reason is in the tropical convergence so, uh, zone seldom occurs in that region and that being the reason for south atlantic and southeastern pacific region in tropical latitude uh, do not originate cyclone okay so let's discuss the next article next article is about girnar wildlife sanctuary so as per the center for environment planning and technology sept data vegetation of girnar wildlife sanctuary has declined from 2000 to 2020 so let's discuss where this girnar wildlife sanctuary is the location is in gujarat so it's a part of the gir protected area which also includes the gir national uh, gir forest national park so this is also known as sasan gir and one of the uh, geological features the most important geological features you should know is that say 
rugged terrain of girnar hills so it's located on the rugged terrain of girnar hills so you can guess the vegetation of this region okay so this can be moist uh, this can be deciduous and thorny scrubland so only in deciduous forest can uh, see lion so in the, in gir area is the only region where you can see asiatic lion in their wild habitat so gir region gir forest is the only region in in entire world where you can see asiatic lion in their wild habitat okay so historical and cultural significance of gir uh, girnar wild sanctuary also should be noted or the girnar hills also should be noted because this is an important pilgrimage site for jain and hindu community so that's all about girnar wild sanctuary so facts about uh, basic facts about asiatic lion also should be noted because in 2024 prelims uh, three statement question was asked about big cats so consider the following statement first statement lions do not have a particular breeding season second unlike most other big cats cheetahs do not roar third unlike male lions male leopards do not proclaim their territory by scent marking which of the statements given above are correct so out of these three statements only one statement is wrong the third statement is wrong so lions do not have a particular breeding season is correct unlike most cats cheetahs do not roar is also correct so unlike male lion male lions male leopards do not proclaim territory by scent marking is actually wrong so that is why it's important to know various facts about these uh, species okay so let's discuss more about asiatic lions so uh, asiatic lions also known as persian lion or indian lion so it's actually uh, smaller in comparison to african lions and so also one among the five big cats found in india so the behavior of asiatic lion can be important because uh, recent uh, trends in upsc you can observe that species behavior is one of the important one of the favorite topics of upsc so understand that male lion doesn't seek a large group and prefers to be with uh, with its two or three female lion so a male lion doesn't seek a large group is the uh, a fact you should be knowing and it prefers to be with its two or three female lions so two or three female lions are part of a male lion group okay and male asiatic lions spend up to 20 hours per day resting or sleeping so that's the other fact about interesting fact about asiatic lions so understand that uh, it's protected under uh, sites uh, as well as wildlife protection uh, wildlife act uh, wildlife protection act of 1972 included in schedule 1 so that's all about interesting facts about asiatic lions and we have already discussed a previous year question which was asked in 2024 so that's all for today let's see tomorrow gogulam seek ias academy india's best civil service learning experience ottekku poridunda oppo njangal undu